And so thankfully everyone um, uh, who is um, joining us on the Zoom was able to come back in. I'm terribly sorry about kicking you guys out. I was trying to close the pop-up message about our Facebook Live. Uh, and of course, uh, what ended up happening is I actually shut down the entire Zoom. Oh, me, uh, oh my. Okay, so getting back to the seven questions uh, that we are going to answer for you today. Do you need to file a tax return? When is your tax return due? Can you get help preparing your tax return? How should you prepare your tax return? Uh, when will you get your notice of assessment? When will you get your refund or when do you have to pay? Um, and most importantly, what's new for 2021? Um, so without uh, further ado, uh, let's get into everything. Um, oh, I see what I'm doing there is, uh, bear with me one second. that noise <laughs> and we do have woohoo! we have our first live viewer on youtube that is a win so if you're joining us here on, on youtube we're talking about personal tax returns the seven questions you need to answer before you file your personal tax return up here in canada um, so without further ado let's get into our very first question do you need to file a tax return so the bottom line is yes um, so uh, you can confirm your tax obligations and whether you need to file a tax return uh, online, but if your income tax was exempt or you had no income in Canada this year, you probably still need to file your personal tax return. And that's because if you want to get some of the benefits and tax credits that you're entitled to, such as the Canada Child Benefit, your GST, HST tax credits, your working income tax benefits, your guaranteed income tax uh, supplement, um, and your climate action incentive, you do need to file your tax return in order uh, to get those refunds. Um, and so if you have low or no income, there is a high probability you're getting a, a refund and you want to be on top of that and filing that so you can get your money back. Uh, if you're a T4 employee, again, in most situations, you're probably due to get money back. So you want to file as quickly as possible. Um, if you are self-employed or uh, paying yourself out of your business, uh, there's a potential that you uh, may owe um, on your personal tax return. Or if you have you know, dividend income or a whole bunch of reasons you could owe, but you still wanna make sure that you get those filings in as quickly as possible um, because when you file it doesn't actually change when the deadlines are, which we will of course be covering today. Um, so when it comes to when is your tax return due, most people know it is due on or before April 30th. Um, there are a few exceptions to this rule, but generally speaking, your tax return is due by April 30th um, of the year following. So. Obviously for 2021, we'd be looking at April 30th of 2022. Uh, there are a few exceptions, as I mentioned earlier. The most notable exception is if you are self-employed or have self-employed income, then you would actually have till June 15th for your filing. Now, the key here is this is your filing deadline, not necessarily your payment deadline. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. In addition, if your spouse or common law um, has uh, business expenditures related to a, a, a tax shelter. Again, you're going to be April 30th. Um, but outside of that, your, your only exception is going to be the June 15th deadline for self-employed. Or if you have a deceased person, the due date of their return will depend on the date of their death um, and whether or not that person owned a business. So it could be actually uh, sooner. It could be up to six months after uh, their death. Uh, if you have someone in that situation, I encourage you to reach out and connect with your account manager to find out what your filing obligations are, um, as well as to make sure that you are doing everything, particularly if they have a business in a way that's as tax effectively, tax effective as possible. The biggest issue that we do see um, with people who have passed on, and if they own corporations, uh, their children may not be aware of something called a pipeline maneuver, which is a really important thing to do uh, to minimize tax obligations. So can you get help uh, preparing your tax return? Of course you can get help. Uh, what is that help going to cost you money? Um, generally speaking, if you go to an accountant such as myself uh, or a uh, tax preparation um, company such as h &R Block, you are going to pay for that. Uh, there are some exceptions to that. Um, so if you have modest income uh, and a simple tax situation, you can go to one of the volunteer programs um, so we have a link to that, uh, but you can also Google Community Volunteer Income Tax Program, 
uh, and they may be able to complete your return for you for free. Um, this is a service that's offered all year round um, from February right through to uh, April. Uh, these organizations, uh, sorry, from February to April, these usually uh, these organizations usually host pop-up clinics. Um, there is qualifications on an income threshold for whether you qualify. So if you're earning a decent amount of income, you probably don't qualify for these programs. Uh, the other tools that are out there are the free tax software, or not the free tax software, the low cost tax softwares uh, like TurboTax and UFile, um, which uh, are great um, tools in and of themselves. They also have new features like TurboTax Live, uh, where you can get help and support from people. Uh, I'm not going to comment on whether those are good or not. You ultimately have to look into those uh, for yourself. Uh, they come with some pros and cons, let's just uh, say that. Uh, now, when it comes to whether you should retain an accounting firm, such as ourselves, for your personal tax return, um, we're usually pretty blunt about the fact that if you're a straight T4, there's not a lot of value that I can add, and you're probably better off using something like TurboTax or UFile. They're very low cost, very easy to do, and there's no value that I can add as an accountant as far as optimizing your tax situation. Once you're starting to get into more complex situations, you've got sole proprietorship income, rental income, investments, that's where you're gonna to start to see the benefit of hiring and retaining an accountant. Um, but uh, regardless of what you do, we do have some basic steps that you should follow to prepare your personal tax return. Um, so it's sort of a seven step process here. Uh, obviously, as you can see, I like the number seven. It's my lucky number. Uh, but the first thing you wanna do is collect all your information and supporting documents. Um, that show both your, your income and any deductions or credits that you can't you plan to plan to claim. Thank you very much. Um, so to fill out your return, you're going to need all these information slips that show your income, such as things like your T4. Um, you may not have necessarily received all these slips slip by the end of February, um, but they are important. You can you can sometimes go onto the CRA represent uh, or CRA my CRA account to get access to these. You'll need things like T3s, T5013s. Um, and, and even if they haven't been sent to you, um, by the time you prepare them, you are required to have these. Um, and if you don't include them, uh, you are likely to be reassessed. Um, so if you haven't received or if you lost and replaced a slip for the current year, um, you have to probably go back to your employer or the issuer of the slip for a copy. Um, if you are registered for the My Account, you can check there first. Uh, and I do encourage that. That's a, a great place to go to just make sure that you've got all that information. Uh, once that you've collected all the information, you're gonna need to select a software that you'll use to, file, to fill out your return. Um, and again, if you're working with us or another accountant, you don't necessarily need a software, but you need to select a company that you're going to uh, work with. Um, so there's uh, tools that work with NetFile, which is really important um, because right now uh, there are some changes uh, that require that, uh, things to be e-filed and express NOA. So make sure that you, if you're choosing a software, it is uh, supported by the CRA. Um, and then next thing you wanna do is make sure that your personal information is up to date, either with the accounting firm that you are working with, with CRA uh, themselves or in the tax software that you are doing. Uh, when it comes to changes of address, what we always recommend is that you file a change of address form with CRA as opposed to just changing your address on your personal tax return and indicating that your address has changed. You can do the, the, the latter, uh, but we encourage the former. Do a change of address uh, so that when you file your tax return, it goes through as smoothly as possible. So it goes, yep, that's in line with the address that I have as opposed to it having to go into a separate workflow within CRA. Um, of course, you need to make sure that you report your income. Uh, and again, this, uh, you know, um, comes back to what we talked about earlier, um, which is making sure that you have all your slips and that you're reporting information from all of the appropriate so sources. Um, and that includes both inside and outside of Canada, uh, because as a Canadian, you do have to report on your worldwide income. Um, so that's really important to be aware of. Uh, next, you're gonna go into finding out what sort of deductions and tax credit credits and benefits that you uh, can claim. And you can get information about those deductions and tax credits that you claim um, on the CRA website, uh, as well as uh, generally speaking, we're going to cover the, the, some of the key ones, you know, obviously things like your RSP, uh, donations. Uh, one of the things that the big question coming up right now is here in Ontario, 
Um, we do have that staycation tax credit, but that is not for this year. Uh, it is going to be uh, for the next fiscal year. So it's not for, for 2021. It's gonna be for 2022, just so you guys are aware of that. Um, and uh, so you wanna make sure that you get everything um, and complete any related forms. Uh, so for you can imagine if you've got rental income, there's gonna be some additional information that we require uh, for that property. Uh, if you have a sole providership income, we're gonna need some more information about that business and any partners that you might have. Uh, if you have investments, as you can imagine, there's different pieces of information we will need re related to those, the reporting of those various types of income. Now, if you're straight T4 income or T5 income, which is salary or dividend, those are pretty straightforward. You just need those slips, very easy to report. And again, for yourself, when you're filling in the tax preparation software, uh, you're gonna find that they have forms that relate directly to those slips. And you're just gonna enter the information as it relates to the various boxes on those slips. One nice update is some of the additional boxes, box 55 through 60 that appeared on the T4 slips last year uh, as it related to um, ostensibly some of the uh, COVID-19 benefits uh, has been eliminated, thank God. Um, so it's a little bit more straightforward on the personal tax returns this year. Although uh, for many of you, there was no impact when it came to those. Uh, step six, uh, send your return to Canada Agency, uh, Canada Revenue Agency. Um, so there's several ways to send your tax return to CRA. Uh, you can file online using the NetFile certified software or through the e-file service. Um, uh, after you e-file, um, you'll, um, you will have sent your income tax return. Uh, you can choose to receive your notice of assessment electronically uh, right away through the express NOA uh, process. And you're gonna see, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, some changes uh, in the, um, notice of assessments that happened in 2021. So we'll be coming back to that. Uh, but with the Express NOA, you can get access to that digital notice of assessment a lot faster. Um, and you can still file a paper return by mailing it to your tax center. There are some additional costs unless uh, you meet specific requirements. So generally speaking, you do not wanna be paper filing unless you're required to paper file. Um, and again, if you're working with us, we'll let you know if you do need to paper file. I'm sure if you're using one of the, those tax preparation softwares and you can't e-file for whatever reason, they will let you know. Um, as I said, there is additional cost to paper filing. Um, so just keep that in mind. And step number seven, keep your supporting documents. So you must keep uh, all of your documents for at least six years after the last uh, notice of assessment and the year that they relate to. Um, so this means that if you have something like um, an asset that uh, has a lifespan uh, that started many, many years before the return that you're filing, um, you'll need to keep the records for that even if that goes back well beyond six years. Um, because you can imagine you might amortize something for longer than six years. Um, so you wanna make sure that you keep those um, uh, and, and keep a list of all the deductions, tax credits, receipts, uh, revenue uh, documents, all of that. And again, if you're a client of ours, we do give you a copy of Receipt Bank. It's a great place to keep that as a digital document that won't fade uh, or erode over time. Uh, so again, some, some value that we give you to, to those of our uh, existing clients. So uh, when will you get your notice of assessment? Another big question that we get asked a, a lot. So if you're using the Express NOA service, uh, which is relatively new, uh, you can get it right after filing. So for those of you who are looking to, you know, get approved for mortgages or anything like that, you need access, uh, we can get access to those a lot faster now. Uh, so we just need to indicate uh, that we're doing an express NOA. Um, and you can expect your, your physical NOA within about two weeks, but your express NOA, you can get immediately right after filing. Um, so again, if you're working with us, just reach out to your team if you need it uh, sort of rushed, you need that NOA right away and we'll be able to access that for you. Uh, you can also get your, your NOA by accessing uh, your MyCRA account. Uh, so if you don't have a MyCRA account set up already, I do encourage you to go and create that right away. Um, of course, um, when we uh, prepare your tax return, we will be entering an email address uh, when we file your return so that you can get notified when that is available. Uh, and again, if you're using one of those free tools, I'm sure, they will ask you for an email address for that as well, um, which is why that that is uh, so critical. Uh, so la second last question here is when will 
you get a refund slash uh, when do you have to pay. Um, so for a refund, um, this will depend on um, whether you have set up direct deposit. Uh, so you can verify the status of your refund by logging into the CRA's My Account. So again, another reason to get access to that. You can also get it through the My CRA mobile app. Uh, typically, you're going to receive that in about eight to 14 days. Um, and it can be even faster if you are on direct deposit, and it can be even slower um, if you are not on direct deposit and you're waiting for snail mail. Um, so while well, they say eight to 14 days, we have seen five to six weeks uh, be a little bit more common in the uh, physical turnaround side. Uh, and we've seen even faster than eight days sometimes with the direct deposit. Um, but that is their stated turnaround time. Now, if you have a balance owing, um, so the refund is going to be a function of when you file, right? So it's going to be in that time frame that we just discussed relative to when you file. Um, now, a lot depends. The earlier you get that in, probably the faster that turnaround is going to be because CRA, uh, well, a lot of things are digital. Uh, you are still dealing with um, uh, human beings and bulk loads of files and work to be done. Um, and so the more they have, uh, the longer it takes them to get through those. So the longer it could take you to get your refund. Uh, now, when it comes to a balance owing, the balance owing is nothing to do with when uh, you file. Um, and uh, it is pretty much April 30th, regardless uh, of when you file. Uh, now, there are a number of different payment options that you can use uh, for paying CRA. Uh, they now accept credit cards, which I do not encourage. Uh, because there is a payment processing fee for paying by credit cards. Uh, you can uh, pay through your bank, you can pay through the CRA account. Um, and if you cannot afford to pay for whatever reason, you can also make payment arrangements by contacting the CRA's department. Now, one of the most important things uh, that is new this year is that there was a, um, um, a, uh, some exceptions made to the normal installments that you might've required to pay. So historically, uh, you know, CRA is going to want you to pay installments uh, throughout the year based off of your previous year's tax return. Uh, through COVID-19, they were granting some leniency on these installments. Many of you, if you did owe last year, probably received a letter saying to pay by the middle of March and then again in June for your installments towards the 2021 calendar year. Um, so just be aware that those installments are back in force. Um, and you should be making sure to pay those installments uh, because they will charge you interest from those installment periods unless when it comes time to file, you don't actually owe uh, based on that situation because they're gonna base their installments on what activity you had in the previous year. If in the current year you don't actually owe, you don't have to pay any installments on that. So that's, that's good to know. Um, now, uh, the last question we have here is, is sort of, What's new? Uh, what's new for 2021? Let me see if I can get back here. Um, so electronic notices of, uh, of assessment. Um, so CRA is switching over to 100% electronic notices of assessment. So sometime in 2022, the CRA will start this process of switching over. Um, and so I'm not 100% sure how many of you will receive a paper copy of your NOA. Um, but we can be assured that uh, by 2023, uh, everyone will be receiving a, a digital notice of assessment. So it really is uh, important that you go ahead and you set up a My CRA account so you can log in and access these and make sure that the email address that you've set up with CRA uh, is uh, the correct one uh, so that it's going to the right place. Um, now, a couple of other changes uh, for 2021. There's actually not a lot of changes uh, in 2021. Um, so obviously the biggest one is going to be related to the COVID-19 benefits and, and your taxes. Um, so let's start with the amounts received related to, to COVID-19. So if you received federal, provincial, or territorial government COVID-19 benefit payments, such as you know Canada Recovery Benefit, Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit, uh, or Canada Recovery Caregiving Benefit, uh, you'll receive a T4A slip with instructions on how to report these amounts on your return. T4A, pretty straightforward. Uh, these slips are also available in your My Account for individuals. Um, if you're self-employed and receive federal, provincial, or territorial government 19 assistance, uh, COVID-19 assistance, um, such as the uh, emergency wage subsidy, the uh, emergency rent subsidy, the Canada Recovery Hiring Program, the Fish Harvester Benefit and Grant Program, 
Um, you have to include these amounts in your business income um, or reduce uh, your expenses by the amounts you've received, depending upon the program. Uh, if you've received a government loan, uh, the loan itself is not taxable, uh, but you have to include in your business income any portion of the loan that is forgivable. When we talk about the SIBA loan, uh, we are calculating those for you. Um, if you've received the CRB, you may have to repay uh, potentially all or part of that amount received if your net income um, after certain adjustments is more than 38,000. So that magic number is 38,000. Uh, the, repa the repayment amount is uh, calculated using uh, a chart based on line 23500 of your federal worksheet. Um, so again, if you want more information on that, um, we will be sharing this PowerPoint, which has links back to that federal worksheet, as well as more information about line 2350 and that calculation. Uh, thankfully, uh, many of our clients uh, were uh, not uh, applicable for these, but we do have people who have partners and spouses uh, who need more information about that. So if you do need more information, um, reach out or again, check their CRA website. It's got great resources on that. Uh, now, lastly, if your um, income was tax exempt, um, if your CRB, CRCB or CRSB income is eligible for tax exemption, uh, under the uh, Indian Act, Section 87, uh, you do need to complete Form T90, the income exempt form uh, tax under the Indian Act, uh, while you file your, your income tax and benefit return. Um, so those of you who know about that, know about that. Uh, those of you who don't know about it, probably don't need to know about it. Um, so for uh, lastly, for the, for the COVID-19 uh, benefits repayment, if you did repay any federal COVID-19 benefits, such as the CERB, CESB, CRB, CRCB, or CRSB in 2021, uh, and you received that you received in 2020, uh, the amounts repaid will be reported in box 201 of your T4A slip. So you'll get a T4A slip that's going to have all the information, uh, or on your T4E slip, um, along with the other employment insurance amounts that were repaid. Uh, you can choose to claim a, a deduction on your return for the repayment in the year that the benefit was received or in the year that the benefit was repaid. Um, so you have that choice to make. Uh, you may also choose to split the deduction between uh, these two uh, returns as long as the total deduction is not more than the total amount paid uh, for that information. So um, a couple of options available for those of you who have made uh, repayment. Uh, and of course, I'm clicking through here. Uh, before I am finished, so bear with me um, uh, a second, because we do have some updates for individuals and families as well. So the Canada Workers Benefit, uh, the Canada Worker Benefit rates and income thresholds have changed for 2021. Uh, it's not new in and of itself, but a new secondary uh, earner exemption has also been introduced. So again, for more information on that, you can go to Schedule 6 of the Canada Workers Benefit uh, for your specific province or territory. Uh, another thing that has changed this year is zero emission vehicles. Uh, the definition of zero emission vehicles has changed for vehicles acquired after March 1st, 2020. A vehicle could still qualify as a zero emission vehicle if the vehicle was subject uh, to a prior uh, CCA or capital cost allowance or terminal loss claim, provided that the vehicle was not acquired by the taxpayer on a tax deferred rollover basis or previously owned by uh, the taxpayer on an arms arms like uh, person or partnership. Again, for more information on that, you can go to guide T4002, uh, which is the Self-Employed Business Professional Commission Farming and Fishing Income. Uh, if you're self-employed or the T4044 employment expenses, if you're claiming the employment expenses. Um, uh, and of course, um, the other change that we do want to talk about, which isn't really a change uh, for 2021, is uh, just the rules for claiming a home office. Um, so these rules are still in place. They, they're not new. They happened last year, but we'll reiterate them. Uh, that the temporary flatmate method, which was uh, first announced in the fall economic statement, will allow eligible employers to, to claim a deduction um, uh, through this period. So we have some rules on, on the home office. Um, so you still cannot claim mortgage interest, principal mortgage payments, home internet connection fees, furniture, those are all staying in place. Um, so we've flown through a lot. 
Um, I do want to give a chance uh, to everyone to have some questions and answers. Uh, so if you're following along here live on YouTube, and I do see a few of you here woohoo! Um, for our first live YouTube session. Uh, I will do my best to try and keep an eye on that. I'm going to try and pop up that chat now. Um, uh, and also, if you are in Facebook and you're following on live, you can post those in the chat and those will get relayed over. Uh, if you are here in the Zoom, um, please do me a favor, uh, post those into the Q&A and I'll be happy to go through them. Uh, the good news is there hasn't been a ton of changes uh, for, for 2021. Um, so most of you, it's going to be very similar as last year, which is, again, going back to that seven step process of gathering your information, um, getting it organized, choosing a return, um, reporting your revenue, uh, reporting your uh, donations and exemptions, filing your return, and then uh, accessing uh, or making your payment or getting your refund uh, as appropriate. Um, so if you have any questions about personal tax returns, um, what you can do, what you can't do, what your deadlines are, uh, please post them into the Q&A. Of course, if you don't actually have any questions, that means one of two things. I have done an amazing job at answering all of your questions, or I have done a terrible job and I've created more questions and no, one's, no one actually wants to answer them. Um, so I still see you sticking around. Um, Jerry has raised his hand. So let me see if I can give you permission to speak, Jorge. Uh, okay, Jorge, uh, you here? I'm going to actually go to my headphones. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, well, I have a fast question. Yeah, second, uh, Jorge. So we got to echo. Give me one second. I got to stop. Uh, my Facebook here. So let me just get out of here. Okay. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Go ahead with your question. Yes. In the last slide, you show that uh, for people who work from home office, uh, we can um, claim it by the electricity, head, weather. Um, but if my agreement with my company where I am working, if it doesn't show that I am doing uh, Home office. How can I prove that I am uh, I am spending some money with the uh, with utilities? So uh, this is so these the rules for claiming the home office expenses. Um, if so, you're saying so. Are you a T four employee? I guess that's the first question. Yeah, you... no, I am a T four. Yeah. Okay, um, and they have they're they're not giving you. Um, so the the good news is then you can claim that basic exemption of the $400. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Uh, and then there's there's really nothing for you to do. Now, if you want to go with the other method, which you can, can go, again, because of COVID-19, you're not actually required to, um, to have anything from the employer to be eligible to do that. Uh, but um, so you can just go ahead and complete that, that form and you are gonna be eligible for it. Um, so if we go over to, now, this is, keep in mind, CRA, we're a bit early on this. CRA hasn't updated their website since November. And so at okay. this point in time, we're assuming that this deduction is going to sit and in, in, uh, be available for 2021 as well. Uh, it's possible they could come down the line and change that. But at, at the moment, they, they didn't say that they were. So it is going to be uh, here as well. Um, so let me just get the home office expenses. Uh, COVID, there is a form for that. Um, da -da -da -da. So for the temporary flat rate method, uh, you don't need anything. Um, the, what you, uh, so you do need the T2200S uh, form if you do wanna be able to claim the other expenses. So you do need that T2200S form. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let me see if they won't, cause I think there, there was something on here about um, if they don't provide it. Uh, so eligible criteria detail method. Yep. Um, so they're, uh, they're certainly allowing it. Uh, you're, so it does, it does say your employer required you to work from home. Mm -hmm. uh, this does not have to be part of your employment contract and maybe a written or verbal agreement. So how do you prove a verbal agreement? I don't know. <laughs> okay. um, so I'm, not, I'm just trying to look on what, what proof they require. Um, so I don't think that they're actually going to be like noting that it says this does not need to be part of your employment contract and it may be written or a verbal agreement. 
Um, now I can't see why your employer wouldn't like, it doesn't, it's no skin off their back to allow you, but it probably, I would encourage you to shoot an email to your boss and just be like, Hey, am I allowed to claim, am, you know, am I uh, allowed to, uh, was I required to work from home? Can you okay. just confirm I was required to work from home, uh, in order for you to do that? Um, so, uh, I mean, the T2200 um, declaration, the T2200S is the new one for COVID-19. Um, so if you cannot, you cannot claim expenses that were, uh, were or will be reimbursed by your employer. Yeah, that's straightforward. So uh, to claim, uh, you have to meet all of these. So one of the following applies. So, okay, that requirement, they, so it, you do require to have the T2200S. It does okay. look like, um, because it says you have to meet all the, so you need either one of the following applies. You have completed a, a signed, uh, a, you have a completed and signed copy of form T2200S, declaration of conditions of employment for working at home due to COVID-19 from your employer. Um, or you have a completed and signed T2200, which they're not likely to give you. Um, so those are, um, I apologize, I misspoke. So you do need that T2200S um, mm -hmm. uh, from your employer, but there's no reason that they wouldn't, wouldn't want to give you that. Um, okay. Yeah, so you'll just need that T2200S. Okay, I get it. Thank you, thank you. No problem. Thanks so much. Uh, does look, there's a couple other questions that came up. Um, will there be an archived copy of this webinar? Uh, yeah, there already is on YouTube and on Facebook, um, and we usually do uh, normally post an another copy of this as well. Um, so those are those questions coming through uh, on uh, the flat rate increase. Oh, sorry. Yes, Rachel pointed out the flat rate increased from 400 to 500 uh, if you are using the flat rate method. Uh, thank you, Rachel. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So it's interesting they didn't re report that as a change. Uh, on the CRA website, it is a change. We just haven't indicated yet on our site. Um, to, 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 okay, so I think that's there's some more in the Q and A. Uh, yes. Um, so Ron, uh, uh, yeah. So the, what um, the basic exemption is? What I'm referring to is the flat rate method. Uh, which is the two dollars a day for up to two hundred and fifty dollars fifty days. You you um, that's what we are talking about. If I uh, if I called it the basic exemption uh, or the flat rate method, that is what I was referring to, as opposed to uh, reporting the individual expenses. Uh, there is uh, on the CRA's website uh, a calculator that is quite handy uh, for figuring out which method will get you the most. Uh, from our experience, uh, what we found um, was that generally speaking, if you rented, you were better off to use the actual. Um, and if you uh, owned, uh, you were often better off uh, claiming the flat rate uh, or basic exemption. Now, of course, that does depend on your specific situation. So I encourage everyone to figure out what's best for them. Um, awesome. So it doesn't look like we have any questions here live on Facebook. So thank you guys uh, for joining us. Uh, I believe we got to all the questions on, or sorry, uh, so we didn't have any questions on YouTube. We got to all the questions on Facebook. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through on the live Q&A. So I'm gonna thank everybody for their time and we'll be back in two weeks with another webinar. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.